Hi guys, welcome to today's video. In today's video, we will continue our alternate future of Europe series. And I believe this is episode 12 or 11, one or the other. And yes, a great European war is happening again. And why is it happening? As nationalism in Western Europe has garnered questions by somehow democracy shown up in the East and the North and the South. And in the Middle East, yes. And so, distrust between them and nationalists lead them to start distrusting them. And Germany's plan, or what they think they want, what they're going to do, is invade Russia. So they think Russia is a paper tiger. Why do they think that? Because they do. And the Turkish puppet state's going to get the rest of Turkey back. Macedonia will be even bigger. But... But they real they don't realize when they're doing these plans that, well, there's a lot of people here that want to free and liberate their lands from nationalism. As Spain, Portugal, Britain, and Germany are very nationalistic. Whereas these countries are more so Western. And they're in Eastern. Yep, that doesn't make any sense. So Western countries have turned bad. Yes, that's what happened. Exactly. And, well... Germany does something very stubborn, but not too shocking to any of you. Well, they decide to invade Denmark to see if Europe would actually respond to them. Which this causes an international crisis, guys. As German troops march into Denmark. As a big crisis over whether to allow Germany to do this. But within like an hour, they're all right here. But Denmark stops the advance here for about 10 hours. And they fall in 10 hours. Because, well, 9 hours they held it. They held out about 4 hours up there. 9 hours here. And about 2 there. Yep, so 10 hours is how long they managed to survive. With... Germany deciding they're going to annex the country, but they don't get time, as Russia has said, you won't get away with this. And Russia said other things about this, including that they're going to protect all the countries they protect. But basically Germany responds by ha ha. But that was not a good idea to laugh. Because, well, they're not going to have an easy time. That they're saying they will. They're saying they're the most powerful. But in actuality, are they really the most powerful? Nope, they aren't. And no, their puppets did not rise up. They might, but they might not. You never know. And well, unfortunately, they forgot one thing the Turkish front, to secure it as well as they thought, because they thought they would have more time to secure that front. But in actuality, they had no time. So Turkey moves forces to here to secure it, which they do fast. And then they move into Bulgaria with the puppet of Macedonia and Turkey. With Germany marching into Hungary on multiple fronts and using their Croatian puppet, to cut Serbska off from Serbia, which they use to their advantage to take Serbska from Serbia. And, well, they march into Serbia. With Serbia falling back kilometers upon kilometers. With another front being started up here. With it being basically one consolidated front. And, well, they move into Hungary's extension area cutting it into and Slovakia's puppet gets to expand as the goal is to take out this area with them quickly sending another offensive up here as now they have a pretty good front because it's less difficult as they have no choice but to move into southern Sweden well, they get to here before they meet resistance. With Germany also landing here while Britain lands there. 
with Iberian nations splitting forces between two, both nations, as Britain now launches an offensive up to the north, and they quickly take out Iceland. But Iceland continues to fight, despite probably still not having an army. And well, although they do inevitably fall. And while most of the fighting shifts fronts to the Hungarian front, as is probably the easiest front to fight on, with Germany so far doing pretty well, with them um, marching through Hungary, as they take out Hungary, rushes down another ally. As the south in Bulgaria falls, quickly a push towards Sofia is made, and they take the capital of Bulgaria, like that. Yep. And they cross the border into Romania with a head towards Bucharest. They manage to take the city and split forces here in half. And then they move towards the coast. With all of these forces having to flee through the coast. Which are Bulgarian, Romanian, Russian, and Turkish. With the Serbian state probably going to fall, with Serbia going to fall, it's inevitable at this point, basically. And while Serbia falls with almost all of their forces, luckily making in the neighboring Romania. With a big encirclement standing as long as they can, with about half the troops getting airlifted out, but only half are managed to be airlifted out before the collapse inevitably came. But with the Turkish state, that's capital is Ankara, or East Turkey, deciding to attack West Turkey. Yes, they used proper geographical terms. They're pretty great. With a huge offensive made away from their capital and to the south. With the puppet state, unfortunately, having huge defeats. But they quickly land in Cyprus and liberate it. But this is probably just the first part where they try to win, but they don't. And with Germany moving into Sweden, as they have a nice stalemate in Russia. With Norway losing Oslo, and quickly after losing Oslo, they are pushed back far guys so they're pushed all the way back to there well then Russia gets forces there but the damage is basically already done guys as they try to cut Sweden off from Russian forces but ultimately in the north they kind of fail their forces got up there quickly but didn't get enough supplies for this cut off so instead of causing a big encirclement where all the forces would need to flee they get pushed back but they had more support there so they attempt this kind of maneuvering again which goes well so Sweden tries to hold on to this with the help of Russia as long as they can with a landing being made on this island of a land I think it is and well, with the Stockholm encirclement being successful, Stockholm eventually inevitably falls. And after the fall of Stockholm, most of the forces escaped, except like 5%, maybe. But at this point, it seems like all hope is lost, so Russia is basically fighting for these lands to stay alive. So yeah. And well, with the Romanian front, Romania is definitely about to collapse, as it's just Moldavia, or Moldova. Actually, it's just Moldova. And while they move in further, as they manage to get far into Russia, well, at least the Germans do, with the help of Britain and Spain and Portugal, and their many puppets, and then moving far into the Ukrainian lands. But this is a better country as it's democratic. 
And how did Russia become democratic? I don't know. But in all my theories, they became democratic. Why did they cooperate with the bad guys? I don't know. In the first Great European War. And well, with this German country in trouble. But to make up for this, guys, they move into Moldova. And quickly, Romanian forces are for forced to flee into Russia. Well, specifically in the Ukraine. But there's, it's going to be hard for them to take Crimea if they ever manage to threaten it. With Germany now ready to send forces to the Turkish puppet state. With the help of the British Navy, they do this. And well, yeah. And then they send ground forces in. And with these ground forces, they manage to push this puppet state all the way back, guys. Well, fine, they re-liberate their puppet. Well, they didn't really liberate it. They took it back, I guess. As they march into this puppet state, Russia's already down a lot of allies. They do not need to lose this country of West Turkey. With, unfortunately, Ankara Falls. So this country that Russia established doesn't do so well. And they quickly, Russia enters, the Germans enter into Kurdistan and Mesopotamia. And well, they cross into Russia. With this area collapsing. And then, well, they land in Lebanon. And, well, they aren't able to win, though. With a big, huge front entering up. Entering into the Caucasus. Headed for Volgorod. And, well, yeah. They also advanced to the Dnieper River in this front. But then they cross it and move down, cutting Crimea off. They make a landing in the south and encircle Sevastopol. And they take the city. And, well, they quickly are entering in. With the Estonian area looking like it's going to fall. With many countries on their team upset at this. Well, yeah. And then, well, this front opens up even bigger. With it looking like they might start creating puppets. Before this war is over. Which would be odd for these kinds of videos. But not impossible. No, I think I'm not going to do that idea. But I do have one idea I want to do. And, well, that involves Germany annexing an, a land. Yep, they enter and take this area into their country directly. Which is a huge blow. But the Russian front, unfortunately, nobody is actually listening to their rule. What do I mean by nobody's listening? Well, let's go to some of the Ukrainian lands. Why am I getting a weird green color, you may be saying? Well, there's a group of people in this area in specific. And some up here who say enough is enough. And well, they're actually successful. And well, with them up quickly being probably going to be able to join in with the Russian armed forces. With some encirclements being made because these forces were much stronger than anticipated. But luckily they managed to do this. And these forces are pretty much slowed in their tracks. As they land in Finland to cut off the city of St. Petersburg. And then they move along the coast. And they take Helsinki. But then they get stuck. 
And well, then they cut across. But their advance is pretty much slowed. And everywhere they can, they run into problems. In the Kievan front, or the... Yep, they move back and secure the city of Kiev. And they move down into the Ukrainian lands. And while the partisans get the hang of it, and while they move further. With them occupying big chunks in two areas, the Belarus one gets big. The Estonian one quickly turns into the Baltic one. But then eventually these forces now are ready to join in with the Russian armed forces. Because, yes, Russia became a democracy. And I don't know when, but it did. With the winter getting much more harsh. But, yeah. With this happening and a huge chunk of the army is pushed back. With the only way out by sea, so a lot of these forces flee by boat. And well, yeah, with the Crimean front entering towards Crimea, they enter on two fronts. And well, they take Sevastopol, and then all the Germans just leave. With Russia then ramping up its attack and doing this. With that being a successful counteroffensive, another one happens in the north. But, they're eventually slowed, but they do manage to move into Romania. And well, in the Finland landing, well, this happens, and Finland starts sending forces over to Sweden and Norway's front. And, well, Germany is pushed back on multiple fronts. But Russia seizes the opportunity they somehow get. And, well, they fund a French revolutionary group. But first they try to get to them. As they invade the street where Istanbul is located. Which they actually succeed in and they take it. And they also land over here. And you see that brown area? Well, yeah. They take that guys, right? And then they move into the Bulgarian front. Which helps them reestablish Bulgaria. When Bulgarians see this, a lot rise up and join the forces. As liberators is what they join them. As well, the nation that took them over is now being destroyed. With Russia now deciding to establish a French state. They actually land in Geneva, though. Why do they do this? Because they need somewhere to start. And this area is close to Germany, so it's embarrassing to Germany. And well, after the fall of this area, they move into southern France. With French partisan groups rising up across France. And well, yeah. With France rising up here too. With France quickly turning. As well, this kind of happens. As across France, big groups rise up. And even Paris was taken back. With France moving south and, well... To the world's surprise, France has re-liberated themselves and have declared the French Republic with a Genevan Republic being declared too. And well, Germany is stuck on two fronts of this war. But something bad starts happening when this starts happening. When Romania's front and Bulgaria's front meets up, and then eventually Bucharest falls. This is where the panic begins. As the nations are unable to do anything. 
but just watch. With a Russian invasion of East Turkey, re-liberation of East Turkey, and soon invasion of West Turkey beginning. With the invasion of West Turkey being harder. But with 500,000 troops, they eventually overwhelm. And why are they needing to knock these forces back? Because they do. And well, yeah. With the fall of West Turkey beginning. Well, now it's completely fell. And the invasion of Greece begins. With Bulgaria invading North Macedonia. And while Bulgarian forces, Serbia has riots and so does Hungary and Romania. Well, many things start turning. As Serbia basically re-liberates itself and Bulgaria meets up with her forces. And Romania is becoming more and more liberated. With Serbia liberating itself and freeing the Croatian area. With Russian help, of course. With the full Balkan front collapsing. It's no use anymore for them to win. There's no way they're winning. So France develops an offensive to the south. Which kicks Portugal, Britain, and Spain out. Why not Germany too, you may be saying? Because Germany is too distracted to do anything. And well, yeah. Yep. The fall of Spain begins. As many places decide they want new government. So a lot of people join the side of France. And well, when they finally take Madrid, they move into Portugal. Which they take Lisbon from Portugal. Portugal and Spain decides there's no use fighting anymore and they both surrender. With Russian naval forces from the Black Sea entering into southern Italy. Entering into the Naples state. With this quick push in, they quickly take Rome. At this point, the point for fighting is surely going to... Fall and morale will drop rapidly. With Russia ready for the final liberation of Eastern Europe. And well, with France doing their strategy on their front, the landing in Iceland, and well, this leads to the fall of the Nordic front. With crisis setting in across Eastern Europe. With Poland not knowing what their future will be, if they'll be an independent democracy or not. But we have to remember, Russia's an imperial democracy. With Russia starting the first blow to Germany as they march into the lands Germany proclaimed as theirs. And well... With Finland and Sweden and Denmark launching an offensive in the Holstein, France launches an offensive into the Rhineland. How come France got so powerful quick? And they also launched forces in the Brittany and Normandy. With the French people all liberated and happy. And well... With all the puppet states quickly falling, with an invasion from Serbia, an invasion from Hungary, an invasion from Russia, with Russian forces speeding up their offensives, with them launching one here, but with stubbornness on Germany's part, Germany keeps fighting. And well, yeah. The Austrian front falls. This front, the Prussian front falls. Now they're becoming even more hassle than they expected. 
Well, I'm basically moving to the 2023 German borders. Well, kind of, but they're all right beating these. On many fronts, this happens, and then, well, well, here at Berlin, an encirclement is made of Berlin with Berlin being taken, but Germany still fights. And yes, you can tell this already doesn't look so great. For the survival of Germany. But after the Second Great European War, Germany has surrendered. Now it's the War of the British Isles. With Russia landing here, the new French state landing here, and Finland helping. Finland's becoming a really powerful nation through this war. And well, yeah. With Ireland falling, quickly Scotland revolts against the English rule. Why did they revolt? Because they can. And France's invasions of southern Britain goes well, as they even managed to take London. With Britain being forced to surrender, and the nationalistic forces of Europe have been knocked out, and celebrations are held across Europe. And well, now for the division of Germany. Let's start with the division, what happens to Iberia, shall we? Begin with Iberia's treaty. The treaties were signed. Naples and North Italy is what Italy becomes. North Italy and Naples, or North and South Italy. And well, then there's South Iberia. Galicia, Portugal, and Spain are now countries. Morocco gained land from Spain. And well, France annexed Brittany, Normandy. England lost, England is now a country as it lost Scotland, Cornwall, Britain, and Cornwall. The United Order basically just collapsed, guys. That's all it did. It collapsed, guys. And just because I didn't color this in already, so now you can see the borders. And what countries are going to go through to the next treaty? Well, as you can tell, I already did the Italian treaty. But I can't guarantee I might give them small pieces of land to make the borders look better. But now I'm going to sign the Treaty of Eastern and Southern Europe. And I'm going to call our countries to say we're occupied in an occupation color. So we can keep those separate. Now let's go to the Treaty of Europe. Well, Eastern Europe. Eastern Europe. Also technically Southern Europe. So yeah. Far so good. Turkey gained lands back. Bulgaria, Greece, Albania all split Macedonia. Romania got nothing. Hungary hasn't got anything yet. Slovakia's independent. Cyprus, Greece, and Albania. And now for the biggest treaty after the Second Great European War, or the Treaty of Berlin. The Rhineland region that also has Alsace-Lorraine. Then there's Germany. And then they made a East German, kind of Prussia thing. And then in the south, we have Bavaria puppet and Austria puppet. Not a puppet, occupation zone. The idea is basically to divide it as much as it can. Is it a good idea, you may ask? Well, what they're trying to do is denationalize these nations to hopefully not have a third Great European War. But who knows? Somebody is probably there to corrupt these and cause another Great European War. But the question is when and how and who and why. But I don't know why somebody would want to cause one again. And like these occupation zones are not permanent. And they're probably bound to change. Like, I don't think Russia is going to be able to hold all of the lands they annexed. And I don't know about Czechia being that big. Wherever I feel like the borders have to change for the series to keep going. But that's just to keep it going. So the Rhineland area is occupied by France. Russia occupies that. 
Ever I occupies this. Russia occupies that. And, well, France occupies... France occupies Bavaria. And Russia occupies Austria. How did they all get freed? And the world overall is probably much better. But, I mean, there's probably still tensions. Bulgaria has newly joined... The, has, not newly. They were always been. But... Quickly, some countries decide their best buds to join it, including the Lowlands, Czechia, North Italy joins it, Ireland, Scotland, Cornwall, Wales, they join, South Iberia, who wants to unite Iberia, and many nations don't like France's step into Iberia, but there's still a Catalonia movement. And well, the number of countries has got small, but that's okay, as that's pretty much all for today's video. We are trying to get to 375 subscribers by May 1st, so if you haven't, please subscribe. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe. And overall, sorry about not having an upload Wednesday, but Wednesday is really busy. Yep, Wednesday is busy. But you still watched my shorts, which was great. So thank you. And we're at 258 subscribers, so we're doing good. But it is April 21st, so we might not get our goal. But we might be able to try and get at least 300. And also, I have the 250 subscriber special to me. I know this video is longer, so that's all for today's video. Please like, subscribe, comment, Wild Mapper out.